Okay, so the question is when to incorporate or how to incorporate a deload leak into your training. And, and the first thing I'd say in answering that question is I would call it a reload leak um, simply for this. Um, I spent a lot of years as a strength coach, um, 12 years as, as a strength coach at very high levels. And anytime we told our athletes we had a deload leak, what that meant to them is I'm going to go through the motions um, and kind of take that week off. And that's not the idea of a deload leak. So if you call it a reload week, just mentally, it gives you a different perspective on it. You're reloading um, for even bigger performances down the road. It's a very important week, not a week to totally take off, um, and not a week certainly to go through the motions on in your lifting. That's an easy way to get injured. The second thing I'd say is, okay, now when do we do a reload week? Um, and I would say there's really um, three times when I incorporate a deload, deload or reload week. One is immediately after a competition. So if I've just spent probably eight to 10 weeks peaking up for a competition, doing really high intensities, really high volumes, um, and then of course the competition is intense itself, your nervous system and your muscular system are probably gonna need some time to recover and refresh. And so I would take that week after a competition as a reload week, um, and that one, um, I'm gonna focus mostly on really high rep, moderate volume stuff, work capacity stuff, um, kinds of things that get a lot of blood flow through the body to kind of accelerate that recovery process. I'm not gonna have a barbell in my hands too often, and I'm not gonna work at really high percentages during that week. I'll probably lift um, four weeks, or excuse me, four days a week in a typical peaking phase. That reload week, I may lift two or three days during that week. The second time I would do it is, um, sometimes you need it in the middle of a phase, okay? Maybe you have kind of uh, a prep phase for your meet before your peaking phase. Um, you usually can't train more than about six to eight weeks for an advanced athlete in a row um, without needing some type of extended recovery. And so, for example, what I do is I'll go through a six week prep phase, um, I'll take a, a reload week, and then I'll go into my eight week peaking phase before a meet. And that one, I'm still gonna train four days a week. Um, and whereas, um, you know, I'm not gonna have a barbell in my hands after me, here I'll have a barbell in my hands, I'll still do all the normal lifts that I do. Um, the volume's gonna be dropped back and the intensity is gonna be dropped way back. So typically, the intensity will be um, at least 15 to 20% below what I do during my regular training phase. And the third time to do it is the week before me, okay? And the idea is we're peaking for this meet. Okay, we're doing a lot of high intensities, a lot of high volumes leading up to a meet. I'm gonna need, need some time for my body to recover for that meet. Okay, I can't work right up to that meet and expect to go into that meet 100%. So I'll work out typically two to three times during the week before competition. And again, those intensities now will be 20 to 30% below what I did during that peaking phase. The volumes will be backed off as well. Um, and really the focus will be on uh, getting good blood flow through the muscle, doing a lot of soft tissue work, a lot of mobility work, and just a lot of extra recovery stuff like um, cold pools, um, hot tubs, contrast baths, you know, extra sleep, um, and doing any of that prehab work for any of those injuries that are nagging you during the week.